Yeah, this one looks crazy. And this is a great reminder that geometry only has a handful of things that they test, but they can combine those things in lots of different ways. And you need to be comfortable noticing which rules are gonna matter for each question because you will almost certainly get some weird, twisted, you've never seen it before kind of geometry thing on your test. So that's what we're practicing with questions like this. There's not practicing how to solve the weird graphic designer logo question. You're not gonna get another graphic designer logo question. You're not gonna get another shape like this. It's how do we break this shape into things that are more useful so we can kind of solve all these weirder problems by kind of coming back to the same basic parts. So let's take a look. Uh, the logo is shown in the figure above. The logo is in the shape of a trapezoid and consists of three congruent equilateral triangles. That matters. So if you have your scratch paper, you might want to even write 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. I know it's a lot, but you never know what's going to help. And these are all equal, so that's nice. Cool. If the perimeter of the logo is 20 centimeters, what is the combined area of the shaded regions in square centimeters? So the perimeter is the total distance, right? So P is 20. Now, this is why I'm always saying don't remember formulas for perimeter. This is a weird shape, right? So what do we have? We have a bunch of different um, sides that kind of from these triangles all combine, right? So I'm going to count them. I've got one, two, three four, five, right? So why is the bottom two sides? Well, because it's two of those triangle pieces, right? They're all the same. So I want to divide this thing by five to get the length of one of the sides. And so that's pretty easy. The length is four. So now I've got all these different pieces. Let's erase this. We don't have too many numbers floating around, but there you go. So all of these are four, 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 four. Why write them all down? because we never know what's gonna matter. So it's good to have a big picture here. Now we need specifically the area of the shaded regions, right? So I know that they're the same. So I'm just gonna focus on one of the triangles, right? If I got this one here on the right, I know that I can um, get the other one just by multiplying by two. And I'm drawing that line there because in order to use the formula for the area of a triangle that's one half base times height, I need to have a right angle between the base and the height. So just having two sides isn't going to help if it's an equilateral triangle because those are at an angle of 60 degrees. So I know that one of them, let's say the base, is going to be four. But I got to get that height. So how do I get it? Well, I know that each side is two and now I can do some Pythagorean theorem or I recognize that it's a 30, 60, right, 90 triangle. And the reason I know that is because look, there's a 60 degree angle there, there's a 90 degree angle there, there's a 30 up here. I split it in half. Right, so this is why you write down everything on your picture. Even if you're like, it's not gonna matter. I, I can remember that. Just seeing a 60 on your page is enough to trigger those 30, 60, 90 kind of ideas. So um, let's see, I can do this. I can pop that reference chart in here. There it is. And let's make it a little bigger. That's what we care about right there, right? So this shape here is going to match up and it already kind of matches up. Just gotta think about like if we tilted it, 90 degrees, right? That X side corresponds with the two down here, right? So this is my X side. This is my two X, right? Cause that's the hypotenuse. And then X root three is gonna end up being the height. That's the side opposite the 60 degree angle. So that's X root three. Well, if X is two, then this is two root three. So they're just like that. We've got a height, two root three. So I'm gonna multiply this now. So area is equal to one half of four is two. So that's four root three. Is that an answer? Yes, it is, but of course that's a trap, right? Because that's only one of the triangles and we need two of them, right? So we have to multiply that by two because there's the one on the left and then the one on the right that I just drew on. So that's gonna be eight root three. That is the correct answer. So just be careful. That's another thing they always tend to do with hard geometry questions is they kind of have what I call like a mission accomplished trap and a, a point where you're going to solve for something and feel really good about yourself. It's going to say X equals or area equals or whatever. And you're like, yes, I've solved it. But then there's one extra little step here. They just chose to make us do two triangles. I don't know why other than to force us to do a little extra work, but it's easy to do, but it's also easy to miss. So just be aware of those mission accomplished traps. If you need to write down your goal as you start this, your work on the question, that way you also have something to go back to and be like, oh yeah, what did I want to solve for? So you don't fall for that mistake. To me, this is actually a very easy question. Looks like it's gonna be crazy, but it's using basic stuff. The ideas of perimeter, the ideas of 30, 60, 90 triangles, simple area formulas, the kinds of things that you need to be comfortable with. It's combined in a weird way, 
but each of those parts individually, you have to know really, really well. And then it's just a matter of seeing how they combine them for each particular weird twisted geometry question.